Hi, good morning everybody. Welcome back. Um, I miss everybody so much and I've been really proud of the amount of work that we've been doing this week. It's been great to see all the pictures that y'all have been sending me and being able to talk to y'all online or on the phone has been wonderful. I love getting those voice um, messages or uh, FaceTime calls are really great for me. I love seeing y'all's faces. Um, I do want to give y'all a quick reminder. We're not having school on Friday because it's Good Friday. So you get a free day. You get to hang out at the home, play, do whatever you want to do. Um, very quickly, we have a lot we're going to cover today, and I'm going to read y'all a story, but I wanted to go over the sight words today because it is our last day to cover them, and if you could today or tomorrow, do your spelling test and send it to me. That would be great. Um, it really helps me know what words we need to keep covering and where we're at in the class. So today is Thursday, so yesterday was Wednesday, tomorrow is Friday. It's April 9th, 2020. So the month is April. It's the ninth day and the year is 2020. All right, our sight words really quickly. Our first one is about, about, A-B-O-U-T, about. Number two is after, A-F-T-E-R, after. Number three is been, it's B-E-E-N. B E E N. Number four is called. C A L L E D. Called. Number five is come. C O M E. Come, like come inside. Number six is could, like could you grab that? C O U L D. Could. This one's very hard. It's a really hard word. All right, number seven is no. No. Remember, no is like I know something. It's K-N-O-W, no. Number eight is out, O-U-T, out. Number nine is same, same. So remember, come, same, and take all have the silent E at the end. So it changes the vowel to make another sound, and you don't say the E on the end. So it's S-A-M-E, same. And number 10 is take. That's T-A-K-E, take. All right, I know we've been doing a really good job of uh, practicing those every day and sending Ms. Farrow all the photos that you take. Um, today with your sight words, I want you to rainbow write them. So we love our rainbow writing. Remember, it's you write each word in a different color. And then um, if you can today, do the spelling test. If not, maybe do it tomorrow or over the weekend and just send a quick picture to Ms. Farrow so I can see where you're at. Um, we also today are going to cover a lot of different stuff. So in math, we're going to be doing our comparing numbers again. Remember, when we're comparing numbers, the alligator eats the bigger number. So I got a lot of really great pictures about people practicing this and showing me what they can do. So very quickly, I'm going to show you what I mean on my drawing board. So. If I was to get a number, so if somebody gave me the number 10 and I got the other number was, let's say 12, which way would I put the alligator? Which one's bigger? Would you rather have 10 apples or 12 apples? Yeah, you'd rather have 12. So the alligator needs to eat the bigger number. Very good. Now, I lost one. There you go. Now, if I had the number seven, and the number seven, which one's bigger? Yeah, they're both the same. So I would do the equal sign, right? Very good. So we need to practice comparing numbers today. And you can do this on a piece of paper or you can do the alligator game. Um, that's something that we love doing. Just point your arms and make an alligator as best you can. Um, and that's a fun way that we can do it at home. You can do it with your brothers and sisters or just by yourself. Either one is perfectly fine. In science today, I want you to sort rocks. So you can go outside maybe and find some rocks if you have some around your house um, or if you need to take a little walk to find a couple rocks, it's perfect. And then we're going to practice our sorting. So how do we sort stuff? We can sort it by size, shape, or color, right? or maybe texture, so if a rock is really smooth and another rock is really hard, maybe not put them together. 
So I want you to sort the rocks and then describe why you sorted them the way you did. So maybe you sorted them all by color and you could say that, or maybe you sorted all of them by texture and you could say that as well. Either way, and I want you to write about it and you could, um, in your science one, draw and label your pet rock. That would be a fun way to do that. So if you can get one rock that you really like, that can be your pet rock when you're at home. And you can describe what it looks like, draw a picture of it, and compare what it's like to your other rocks. And finally, in social studies today, we are going to talk about how everything needs something basic. So what do you need every day? So what do you have to have? Remember, we've talked about wants and needs before. So what is something that you need in your house or you need to survive? So people maybe need shelter or clothing, anything like that. But I want you to draw a picture or write about the different needs that you have or something that you have to have. All right, so that's what we're covering today. Um, I am gonna read y'all a story really quickly. Um, it's one of my favorites, but while we're reading this, we need to first go over how important pictures are. So next week, we're gonna be talking about informational text. And we've talked about these a lot and we're gonna go over it later, so don't, don't worry if you forgot because it's, it's, it was a long time ago. But for, for informational text, we wanna talk about how important pictures are. So sometimes the pictures can help us when we're reading, if we don't understand what we're reading or we get lost, we can look at the pictures and they'll help us understand what we are missing. Um, so today I want you to look at your pictures and draw and write about something. So draw a picture of something and then write about it um, and try to match the two together and try to understand, or maybe if you have questions, you can call Ms. Bear and ask, um, about why you need both. So why you need pictures and why you need the writing. So sometimes they can help explain the other ones. All right, so today we're gonna read my fa one of my favorite books. This is Verde, or Beardy, Beardy, sorry. My Spanish came out. All right, Verde. And with this book, I like it so much because it has so many words. So if we didn't have the pictures and I was just gonna read y'all the story and I wouldn't show you any photos, it might be a little confusing to understand what we were talking about. You might get lost if there's too many words. So the pictures help us stay on topic and remember what we're talking about the whole time. So they're very important. All right, so we have Verdi. And this is by Janelle Cannon. It's the same person that wrote Stella Luna. And we love Stella Luna in class. So on a small tropical island, the sun rose high above the steamy jungle. A mother python was sending her hatchlings out into the forest, the way all mother pythons do. Grow up big and green, as green as the tree's leaves, she called to her little yellow babies as they happily slithered among the trees. But Verdi dwaddled. He was proudly eyeing his bright yellow skin. He especially liked the bold stripes that zigzagged down his back. Why the hurry to grow up and be, and be big and green, he wondered. Maybe some of the older snakes in the jungle could tell him. Verdi ventured into the treetops to look for them. So that was a lot to go over, but we have the picture to help us remember what we're talking about. Sorry, I might move a little bit. Umbles, Aggie, and Ribbon were lazing on some branches nearby. Verdi peered at their droopy green bodies. It's not polite to stare, chided Aggie. Umbles groaned. It takes nearly four weeks for that last lizard to digest. I surely do like lizards, but lizards don't like me. Why don't lizards like you, asked Verdi. Don't interrupt, Umbles grumbled. Dear me, whined Aggie. If I don't shed soon, this itchy skin will drive me bananas. Verdi tapped a tune with his tail and waited to speak. Stop that, Verdi. You're making me nervous, Ribbon complained. Besides, you'll never grow up to be properly green, always inter interrupting and constantly fidgeting. Verdi couldn't imagine being in such a hurry to be like them. And he really wanted to keep his sporty stripes. Hoping to find snakes that weren't so boring, Verdi slipped away. Dozer was snoring in a tree not far from the others. Hello, said Verdi. Do you want to climb the trees with me? I'm tired, Dozer growled. 
Go do a few laps around the jungle, okay? Purity's heart sank. Green was not only lazy and boring, they were rude. At the very top of a very tall tree, Verdi gripped one branch with his tail and another with his little snake jaws. I will never be lazy, boring, or green, he thought. I will jump and climb and keep moving so fast that I will stay yellow and striped forever. Then Beardy let go. Wow, he's flying through the air. From a distance, the greens watched. Oh my, they said. Ribbon shook his head. At this rate, he'll be lucky to make it to his first molt. Aggie nodded. He's likely to put an eye out on a branch. Umbles moaned. He may not live to turn green. Certainly they're a little worried about him. But one day, Beardy's skin began to peel, revealing a pale green stripe stretching along his whole body. Cack, he gasped. How can this be? I'm the, sme I'm the speediest snake in the jungle, and I'm still turning green. He raced down to the river, grabbing a mouthful of rough leaves. His frantic splashing caught the eye of a large bottom feeder cruising the murky depths. Yum, he hummed, lunch. So he jumped in the water to try to get the green off of them. Before the fish could howl Verdi under, the frightened snake bit him on the nose. Ah, poof, with a blast of his rubbery lips, the green fish sneezed, sending Verdi out into the air. Slapping onto the soggy shore, Verdi skidded out of reach. Oof, that was close, he sputtered. Every inch of his body was covered with wet, gloppy mud. Hmm, kind of lumpy, kind of brown. It sure beats being green, and he left the mud on. But the soft brown muck dried into a hard gray shell, and Verdi could barely move. If he even budged, the, stiff, the stuff cracked off in the jagged chunks. As each piece fell away, Beardy could see that his body was even greener than before. This is terrible, cried Beardy. He pictured himself hanging around in droopy loops, itching and complaining and worrying all day like the old greens. He looked up into the sky where the sun blazed a beautiful yellow, just the color he used to be. Then he pulled a vine to the top of a tree. Launching himself from the treetop, Verdi startled a flock of colorful birds. He became dizzy with delight, sure the bright sun and his, soft, and his lofty speed would turn him golden again. In his joy, Verdi forgot he would fall back to earth. Snakes can't fly. Whippity whappity, fit fat wham, plummeting through the trees, Verdi landed in a crooked sprawl across a log on the forest floor. He couldn't move. Help, he croaked. Oh my goodness. As usual, the greens had been watching Beardy's antics. They moved quickly to where he lay. Didn't I say it would come to this, Umble said, shaking his head. Aggie agreed. Lucky thing he still got two good eyes. They lifted, they gently lifted Beardy to a safer place where they could watch over him while he healed. So we have the big picture over here, but right here, I don't know if you can see, we have this small little picture that tells us what we're doing or what they're doing. Nearly sp splitting, neatly splinting to a branch, Beardy had no choice but to listen to the greens as they gabbled. Remember how I used to streak across the floors, forest floor, Ribbon asked. Quick as lightning, Aggie answered. And I climbed giant trees like they were nothing. They grew taller than, taller than you know. The things I dared to run down and swallow, Umbles bragged. Wild boar were no match for me. Beardy was astonished. You used to run and climb and hunt giant pigs? What happened? Ribbon crashed, just like you, Aggie replied. I took a terrible fall and almost put an eye out. Then old Umbrel Umbles nearly choked. Now we all prefer the quiet life. 
a warm perch, a little sunshine, and then an occasional good meal. The greens rambled on about their days of glory, and Beauty settled in on his branch. So they're trying to straighten him out, make sure he heals right. Finally, one afternoon, Umble said, Looks like you're nearly ready to go again. He carefully untied Beardy from the branch. You're welcome to come with us, said Aggie. We've been agreed. The green slipped quietly back into the florist. Beardy wasn't ready to join them. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go. So he just stretched and stayed put until the sun went down. He listened to the forest come alive. So he's way down here. Wow. Time passed. The sun and the moon took turns in the sky. Verdi marveled as the full moon grew thinner every night. Then he watched patiently as it slowly grew again. He wondered why he hadn't noticed that before. Verdi became so green that he blended in perfectly with the leaves. And he was so still that the other creatures walked right by him without seeing. Do y'all see Verdi in this picture? He's right here. One fine morning, as Beardy basked in the sunshine, two small yellow snakes approached. They tapped and fidgeted as they stared. Get a load of this old green guy, one of them whispered. Do you think he ever moves? The other snickered. I seriously doubt it. They're just like I used to be, thought Beardy, and now I'm what I was afraid to be. He looked at his big green body and slowly smiled. How would you like to climb trees with me, he asked. With you? The yellows were astounded. I'll even show you my fancy figure eight, Beardy replied, though he was a little bit worried about putting his eye out. So again, down here, we have small pictures about what's happening. So it's him talking to the small stakes. With practice, the three snakes perfectly performed a triple figure eight. Leaping and looping with his striped friends, Beardy laughed. I may be big and green, but I'm still me. The end. And this gives us snake notes. So it tells us about different snakes and where they live, what they do. All right. So that was our read aloud for today. Now remember at home, you can read your own book and go over it. Or you can just listen to my book every day. Up to you is perfectly fine. Um, try to write three sentences today if you can. And remember to do your math and log on to Imagine Learning every day for 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon. Also, remember that ancillary teachers are posting stuff. And next week, we're going to be starting Science with Ms. Adams online. So every day or every other day, either one is up to you. You can get online and learn from Ms. Adams. All right, it was great to see y'all. Uh, I will post another video on Monday and keep sending me lots of pictures of how you're doing and FaceTiming me as much as you can. All right, bye everybody.